I work in rural sanitation. Uh, most of you might think that this is an important challenge to tackle. But how many of you can really tell me why is it so important? As a researcher, one of the things that drives me is this question of why. And how do I address it? So what I'm going to talk to you about today is derived from my work at UNU Merit and Finn India. Why is sanitation important? Access to sanitation has been recognized as a basic human right, which means that people have the right to have access to a toilet in order to relieve themselves. But sanitation is important for more reasons than just being a human right. Inadequate sanitation has a significant impact on health. It's linked to diarrheal disease, the spread of vector-borne diseases like malaria, typhoid, and cholera, and other parasitic diseases. In 2011, UNICEF estimated that around 760,000 children under the age of five are dying every day due to diarrheal disease. India accounted for 24% of those deaths, which means 182,000 400 children under the age of five are dying every day. 90% of these deaths are directly linked to contaminated water, lack of sanitation, and inadequate hygiene. According to the World Bank, the estimated cost of inadequate sanitation to India is $54 billion a year. So now you might understand slightly why sanitation is so important. But sitting here, you might think, you know what? It still doesn't affect me. Let me paint you a little picture. You're standing on Marine Drive in the monsoons, and the waves are splashing up at you, and you're enjoying yourselves. Seems like a great escape from the heat that's outside. Let me enhance that picture for you a little bit. Mixed in the waves are tiny particles of fecal matter. And what is that, essentially? It's other people's potty. <laughs> so sanitation is important. When we, think of, when we think of sanitation in our homes, we think of a bathroom. But from our homes in the bathrooms, all that fecal matter or sewage is taken to seven different treatment plants around Mumbai, where they are treated and let out into the sea. Urban India generates approximately 63,000 million liters of sewage a day, while we have the treatment capacity of only about 23,000. So 63% of our sewage is not treated or not treated effectively before it is let out into water bodies like rivers, lakes, and seas. This affects not only our lives, but also the lives of all the organisms that live there. In 2015, the United Nations adopted a new agenda for development enshrined in the Sustainable Development Goals. These 17 goals are a roadmap to where our world can be in 2030. Sanitation is an important aspect of these goals, most directly linked to goal number six, which is access to water and sanitation. But it's also linked to a number of, these, number of other goals, like Poverty, hunger, health, education, gender inequality, clean energy, sustainable cities, and life underwater. So it is safe to say that a push towards sanitation is going to be a push towards a number of these goals. In 2015, 564 million people lacked access to basic sanitation facilities in India and defecated in the open. This means that about 100,000 tons of poop ended up in the open every day. How much is 100,000 tons? It seems like a big number. It's enough to fill up Wembley Stadium completely. Every day, this much poop. So it's safe to say that it's a genuine health problem. <laughs> so in order to achieve SDG 6, we must move towards eliminating open defecation. But what I've come to realize in my travels around India and my work in rural India is that it's not as simple as just building toilets. I've often gone to villages where I see toilets in houses and people are still defecating in the open. 
these toilets are being used for as chicken coops or as storage units or as utility closets. And when I ask people, you know, you have a toilet, why are you defecating in the open? The most common response I have gotten is, it's too congested in there. You know, we like the open breeze when we are pooping. <laughs> so people need to be educated as to why they must use a toilet. And they also, we need to ensure that we, that people take responsibility and ownership of these toilets in order to ensure that they are being used. So when we think of a toilet, we in the cities just think of a commode. But everywhere else where there is no sewage system, it's not so simple. The toilets also need to be able to process the fecal matter. So predominantly, there are three types of toilets that are being built around India. The first looks something like this. It's a pit latrine. So it's a six-foot line pit where people defecate and the fecal matter collects. Over time, the liquid components leach out of this pit and the solid components turn into compost. Now, if this pit is not built correctly, or if it's built, say, too close to a water body or too close to the groundwater table, this leaching liquid components are going to get into the water and contaminate it. So then all the water that we are going to be drinking is going to have little pieces of poop in it. The second type of toilet is called a septic tank. Here there's a chamber that processes the fecal matter before it's let out. But what remains in this chamber is something called fecal sludge. We need to ensure this thing needs to be, the fecal sludge needs to be taken out periodically and disposed of safely. And if the chamber is not built correctly, when it's, a when it's monsoon season and there's heavy rains, rainwater can enter this chamber, causing it to overflow and contaminating all the soil around it. The third type of toilet that is being built is not very common, but it's built, it's called an ecosan. It's called a urine diversion toilet. Here, it requires a significant change in behavior among the users. There are separate places to urinate and separate places to defecate, and no water is used in this model. The fecal matter, devoid of any water or urine, composts within nine months, and then can be taken out and used as a fertilizer for crops. The urine and wastewater can then be treated and used for irrigation purposes. India is a country of vast and varying geographies, which means a one-size-fits-all model doesn't always work for sanitation in India. We need to ensure that the toilets that we are building are non-contaminating, which means that they're not acting as points of contamination for our water bodies and our soil. We don't want to solve the problem of open defecation today, only to create a much bigger problem of contaminated groundwater and soil in the not-so-distant future. We in the cities have had access to sanitation for a long time. So, you know, we may think that you know, we're, go we're going the right way, but that's not really true. Because we think of sanitation with the limited view of having only access to a toilet, we're not in the best shape either. In February this year, the largest lake in Bangalore city caught fire. The fire burned for 12 hours in the middle of a lake that covered 890 acres. Scientists from the Indian Institute of Science estimated that around 500 million liters of sewage, untreated sewage, is dumped into this lake every day, which caused methane to build up, which then caught fire. If we continue on this path towards development without any concern for the environment, we are going to be heading towards a severe water crisis and the state of our villages will not be very different from that of our cities, where we produce more waste than we can manage, contaminated water sources, and have severe health problems. The scenes that are depicted in Mad Max are actually not so far from a reality that we are heading towards. So we need to ensure and find new ways to conserve water, but we also need to find and ensure that the sources that we do have remain free of contamination. 
Now, sanitation, therefore, is very rightly put on the top of the development agenda for India. 9,000 crores were allotted to the Swachh Bharat mission in last year's budget. A significant portion of that was to build toilets. But building toilets is not, is not so simple, as I've just explained to you. These toilets need to be, you need to make sure that the toilets that are being built are non-contaminating. We also have excellent masons in our country, but building toilets is a new exercise for them. So district-level training workshops need to be set up to ensure that these masons are not building the wrong kinds of toilets. In, the most, in one of our most recent studies, we found that 45% of the toilets that were being built were abandoned in two years because they were in desperate need for repair. So while we are working towards providing access to those 564 million people in India that did not have it, we need to also ensure that the access that we are providing them is sustained. And so repair and maintenance agencies need to be set up now to deal with these problems as they occur. Finally, while talking about sustainability, we need to the Swaj Bharat mission also needs to take into account the cities, sewage, and fecal sludge. Now, companies are very, very dedicated towards achieving this goal. Yeah? 2,000 crores were spent since 2014 as part of corporate social responsibility programs to just build toilets. But, you know, building toilets, it's just it's not enough. More time and energy needs to be spent in educating people on why they must use them. Because without that, building toilets is a futile exercise. This small recalibration into looking at CSR programs will take us forward leaps and bounds in achieving this goal. These focus areas are not just you know, points to ponder on for companies and policymakers, but it's also opportunities opportunities for social entrepreneurs who are working towards achieving development in India and sustainable development in India. Over the last few years, I've had the immense pleasure of working with some fantastic social entrepreneurs who are addressing different aspects of this goal, from creating effective microorganisms that can speed up the composting process in the toilet chambers, to creating fun and interactive games that might make learning about why toilets is important fun. So my, my call is this. We don't talk about sanitation, not among ourselves, not to anybody. It seems like a taboo subject to us. So all of you need to start talking more about your shit and more about poop. Sanitation is a grand challenge, and so it needs to be tackled from multiple perspectives. When different stakeholders get together and talk and initiate a dialogue, we'll be able to create long-term solutions for the sustainable goals. So do not flush and forget. Think about what happens to your poop after the toilet. It might seem like something you all don't want to do, but it is important that you all do so. <laughs> because this is important not only for our cities, but also for our villages. Thank you very much. <laughs>